B-Max Audio Adventure. This is BJJ365. Hello, Lindsay Jones McCatherine. Hello. You look lovely today. Oh, thanks. How was training? I felt like I was going to throw up at the end. Why? Because I wasn't feeling good this weekend. You know how, like, when you are just getting back into something athletic and you do, like, really hard athletic activity and then you just, like, Ugh, I'm going to throw up. Uh, yeah, so, I don't do so. hard stuff. I just lay there and cry. Okay, well, it's still hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> you had a good practice, though. I thought. I, yeah, I did, but like I said, I you look you like look throw like uh, you were getting really frustrated with the Ugh. ankle lock, heel hook stuff. My body doesn't work right. Like I don't know. I, I hear the words that you guys are saying, but like my body goes, no, we don't get it. <laughs> so you know, we should. Not uh, out well. <laughs> how's the dragon boating going? Oh, well, we don't practice. I know. What are you going to do? Are you going to... You were talking about getting on the old, like, oh. making a new team or something. Oh. Like, y'all just decided not to oh, do it? no. Like, we get all fired up. And so during the season, or actually at the end of the season, we're always like, yeah, we're, there's tournaments that we're going to go to, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. We're going to get a new team together and get a boat and all this stuff. And then no, uh, we just never get together and you should start kayaking or something okay <laughs> um well my dad said that uh when he retires i think in march that he's gonna get some kayaks and we're gonna go kayaking on the lake so you just I take them down him, to the river i told him that Flint i would creek. much rather i'd much rather go to smith lake than to uh flint creek because i don't want to get eaten by an alligator you know, that's something me and you got in common. Yeah. Like, I don't, don't want to get eaten by an alligator either. I don't want to get eaten by an alligator. Yeah. And I was actually thinking I wonder how many about, of our listeners feel the same way. Probably a lot. Yeah. I was actually thinking, like, today, who, does anybody actually have a pet that is an alligator? Like, why do you... For sure! Like, how how's that a good idea? Well, no, it's never a good idea, but I guarantee... Somebody's like, got a pet alligator. I bet I mean, like, like, there's hundreds of them in Florida. So, like, okay, I understand, like, mammals can have, like, dogs and cats, I think, can be affectionate towards their owners, right? Like, Yeah, for know. sure. Not cats as much. Well, okay. Cats are just tricking you to get you to feed them or but do something they want you to once, do. I think once the animals get larger. Cats are horrible. Like, they don't care about you anymore. But then reptiles, like, why? Like, that's never a good idea to have a pet that is a reptile. Well, sometimes it's a good idea. I, saw, I reference Pete's dragon. I saw um, on the. Did you ever see the, Pete's dragon? I did. That was a really good idea. That dragon <laughs> protected him. He was magic. Well, so well, be it. I, I did see. Uh, we were watching. You think a alligators docu- can't be magic? I think that's no. like. That's speciesist against alligators. Maybe. Maybe they should protest. Maybe just nobody's ever taken the time to show an alligator magic. Well, you ever think kid, about that? The kids and I were watching a nature documentary, and it was uh, there was a boa constrictor that was very affectionate towards its owner. And it was magic. Magically lethal. <laughs> <laughs> it squeezed it so hard. Loved it so hard. <laughs> it was like, uh, I would love him and uh-huh. love him and call him George. <laughs> <laughs> that Bugs Bunny or Coyote, I can't remember. It's a cartoon from when I was a little kid. What was that? That was the abom- That was Bugs Bunny and uh, the Abominable. Is that, did I say that right? Say abominable? I think that was right. Abob- Abob- abominable. <laughs> did I say it right? Abominable. The, the cousin to the Sasquatch. <laughs> the white one. The Yeti. Now, is it is it a Yeti and it's just been around snow for a long time and he's just evolved? Yeah, I don't know into what's having- going on. We'll have to ask isn't, Joe Rogan. Isn't he that knows. What happened I guarantee to, Joe Rogan's got the answer to that question. Isn't that what happened to the polar bears? Like, they just evolved because they're around snow all I the heard time. polar bears eat, like, they actively hunt human meat. Does somebody have a pet that's a polar bear? Nah. I don't know. The zoo got some. They're not that scary when you see them at the zoo, though. Uh, they're pretty scary. Nah, they're pretty far away. They don't was feel one so scary. What, but when the tiger he, walks past you, like on the other oh, side yeah, of that glass, and he just puts his forth. nose right up against the glass and goes, I would destroy you. Cats are scary, man. Oh, yeah. Back to my original thesis. I guess that was my original thesis. Hey, let's talk about jujitsu. Okay. Remember when we went to England? Mm-hmm. 
That was cool. Yeah, I was there. Let's talk about it. Go. No, you go first. Oh, I wanted to go first. <laughs> I mean, I wanted you to go first. I mean, it's got to be your bull. <laughs> well, okay, so we went to Ireland. Mm -hmm. Then we came from Dublin. We flew from Dublin down to Southampton, which is down on the coast, like the southern south, get it? Mm -hmm. Southampton, the southern part of England. And uh, That we, was Rob's school, right? That was Rob Rooney at Blue Dragon. Mm -hmm. It's my guy, Rob, and I gave Rob his blue belt. Even yeah. though Rob's been doing martial arts for a long time, he's pretty new to Brazil. the Brazilian jiu-jitsu way of doing things, and particularly the Tenth Planet way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, he just moved into a new building. Just got himself a new school. Nice and that was my second time there with him. And uh, Sean and I went to see him last time. And uh, he invited us to come back. And so... Really proud of him, man. He's gotten a lot better. You know, we're gonna we're gonna gotta gotta. I'm only gonna see him probably once a year. You know, so he's gonna have big, big hard bunches of work to do every year in between if mm -hmm. he wants to keep progressing up the belt ranks. Because purple's not easy. Blue. He said he was gonna do some traveling, yeah, right? Blue, you can get to purple. To do, takes, he was gonna go for me to at least is harder. Banbury. Right. Banbury, which is another place that we went. Banbury. The Banbury Martial Arts Center, a.k.a. BMAC. We had a seminar. It was BMAC at BMAC. That was so cool. That was just a total accident. But, yeah, that's 10th Planet Banbury. Mm -hmm. That's where Gavin and Stuart, although Gavin's last name is Stuart, he's not the same person as Stuart. Mm -hmm. and, but Mick is in charge of all those guys, which means I love them. Because Mick is a horrible, horrible human being and in all the right ways. He he plays like this smashing, grinding. The stuff you love. Yes. All the things that make my heart just flutter. Mm -hmm. That's what that's the kind of jujitsu Mick likes. And they're all fighters. Everybody there's a fighter. Mm -hmm. And and I like dealing with people who are fighters but they love jujitsu. Yeah. That's my favorite kind of people to deal with because they still think about punching. They still think about being rude with their grappling, but that's but it's not their focus. They're wanting to get their jujitsu better for fighting. That's my favorite kind of people to to get on the floor with when I travel. Yeah, kind of like the combat jujitsu stuff. I it's see. Different. I love combat jujitsu. Do we want to wait and talk about combat jujitsu, the EBI later, <sighs> or just talk about England right now? I think let's just talk about what we want to talk about. Okay, I ain't got no rules up in this beast. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I love combat jujitsu. I, a lot of people don't like it, but I think it's like a really important bridging sport to because most yeah. people when they sign up for jujitsu, they don't want to be getting hit or and they're not even thinking about it. And most jujitsu practitioners, after they stay with it for a while, even if they start out with self defense in mind, mm -hmm. by the time they hit like mid blue purple belt, they're kind of moving into the sport side of things like jujitsu to beat jujitsu right that's i think right. that's where i i started out wanting to defend myself but now it's yeah well yeah I mean, you, I think once I can, you get that figured out right you want to know how to beat the people you're rolling with right but you've talked you and i've talked about it before about like it's a different jujitsu it is like you are, it's made of the same stuff it's made of the same fundamentals yeah but, but you're compromising some of your pressure and position to be able to throw a punch right so and you know that's what sergio marais did so well against mm -hmm. ben when I, we were you know i went down to brazil i know you know but those of you that are listening may not know i just went down to brazil and i cornered ben saunders not exclusively you know it's me and jason patino and casey halstead we cornered ben saunders in his fight at ufc fight night in sao paulo brazil against sergio marais sergio marais Marias is a three-time black belt world champion. Mm -hmm. This dude has choked out Kron Gracie in the gi. Like, he is the truth. And he got out there with Ben. He got an early takedown in both the first and the second round. Mm -hmm. And rather than posturing up to throw strikes, Just he glued his connection to Ben, mm -hmm. and he slowly passed the guard, and he slowly mounted, and he slowly worked himself into an arm lock, and the first round ended mm -hmm. with, with Ben being threatened with an arm lock. And the second round, he got the takedown, and he slowly con he connected his body, and he slowly worked past the guard, and he slowly worked into the mount, and he slowly worked himself into an arm triangle, and he got the tap. Like it was, uh, of course, Ben's my Ben's my boy, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But, you know, looking, uh, trying to be objective and trying to be an outside observer, trying to always be self-aware, you know, and, I'm, and I know Ben would like this too. That was a perfect jujitsu performance from Sergio Marias. He didn't feel like he needed to throw it was a, a punch perfect, at that point. It was a perfect mixed martial arts bout using one of the arts. Yeah. You know, it was a it was a display of what jujitsu can be if you'll just get great at jujitsu. It was it was because yeah. because Ben's a Ricardo Laborio black belt. He's working with Eddie Bravo. Like he's a real black belt. Right. He's a submission artist, mm-hmm. and Sergio was able to use the pure fundamentals of jiu-jitsu to slowly grind in part and take what he wants let's go back to england go oh, you oh, got something sorry go well i was gonna say the the final round of the ebi with thor and matt what's oh, his name oh my gosh secor matt well, secor like, was it that one where it wasn't like any slap like when no that thor? was the semifinal against kyle oh, Chambers. okay yeah well they didn't really throw any slaps yeah, I don't Anything. know if they had like an agreement working that they weren't okay. going to try to bust each other up. Maybe. It, it kind of looked like that to me. And the announcers sort of sort of hinted that that might be the case, but I don't know if they knew that if they were just making an observation as yeah. well. But it did look that way to me that they like were just, just going to come out and anything. grapple. Yeah, because they didn't throw one strike at each other. Yeah, I, don't I, noticed, think. I noticed they didn't. Um, but man, how amazing is Thor, bro? Oh, yeah, he's incredible. How about shout out to my boys J.M. Uh, Holland and Zach Maslani on getting their black belts? Yeah, talk about deserve it. Yeah, for those sure. dudes have been blowing up out there on the East Coast. Proud of those guys. Yeah, they're some of my favorite people in the world. And of course, J.M.'s been on the podcast a couple of times. Yeah, haven't had Zach on as much. I think he's been on once. They have extraordinary hustle. Yeah, and they're gangsters. Like they're real life gangsters in my brain. Like if they were into crime they would be gangster you know they would be in the mafia like that's my kind of dudes yeah but instead they're just into jujitsu so <laughs> that's good you know stay away from the crime right. but i like that hustle i like that way oh, they yeah. do things okay uh, back to england yeah so we went to banbury and um i did a pressure passing seminar in banbury and we got it all we videoed the whole thing and that's uploaded on the website right now brandonmc.ninja so if you want to see that uh, I thought it was a. I thought I did a good job. I thought yeah, it was really good. That was probably your best one, of my, one. Yeah, that was the best one I taught on the trip for sure, and uh, probably the best seminar of mine that I, we've ever gotten on that, video. That one might be the the mo- the best example of like what epitomizes your jujitsu. I think too. Mm, tell me more, girl. Talk about my <laughs> jujitsu. You got my got my hairs on my back of my neck standing. Oh up. yeah, <laughs> yeah, girl. <laughs> Well, I mean, just, you know, talking about, like, what your hands are for and what your body is for and just, you know, demonstrating it, going in, pressure passing, and but not using your hands to hold, like, using your hands to base. And it's just, you know. Yeah, I, I was on. I was firing on all cylinders that night. Like, I, I don't always convey the message the way I intend to convey it. I can always do it with my body, mm-hmm. but sometimes my words miss me, you know, even yeah. if I have a great plan. I get I get uh, driven and tossed by the wind a little much, you know. But, but yeah, I felt like that really came together, which was awesome too. It's like Jordan's flu game because I uh, I was sick. so sick. I was yeah. so sick for the pretty much the whole time that we were in Europe. It felt like, yeah. especially England. Uh, then we went to Darlington. I don't remember what order it was actually. I think Darlington was last. I can't remember. Yeah. So we did. Yeah. No, no. We London was last. Went Darlington Dun- and then London. So yeah. Darlington with Luke Randall, who's mm-hmm. one of the nicest. Oh, super nice guy. I, I love that guy. He And he's got a good jiu-jitsu, too. Brown belt mm-hmm. under Eddie. I think Gio and Boogie are the ones that actually awarded it to him. But he's a brown belt as well, just like Mick. I think they got him at the same time. What a great dude, man. He's yeah. He's the man. So we did that in Darlington. Did some ham sandwich stuff there. Mm-hmm. And then kind of closed with some pressure stuff. And then I think I... Still sick. I lined everybody up pretty much and rolled at the end. Not really lined up, but I I tried to roll a little bit with everybody in the room. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. That was the first night I had done that. Even I just had not been feeling good. I didn't roll much at my seminars when I was in Europe. I was just so sick. It was the worst. But as we got towards the end, I was like, I got to do it. <laughs> so I did it in Darlington. Then we did London. Then we had a couple of free days in London. Yeah. Okay. Jump on a bus. Ride around on top of the bus. That was great. That was that was great. That's the best way to see London, by the way, in my opinion. If you ever go, just get on a bus 
right up there on top, put them little headphones in. I think listen that was to her favorite talk. part was just listening to this. Yeah, I like all the, the info. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff. And it it'll like as you go past a per, a certain position, like it'll skip ahead if it's if it's still talking and you know you've reached a different position, it'll start talking about that position. Yeah, so, it was great. I was love cool. that. I love the dorky kind of stuff. We went to the National Gallery, the art museum. Yeah, all these Picassos and Monet. Monets and. <laughs> And mayonnaise and mayonnaise, uh-huh. like, and the whole time, really. You're this, not a fan of impressionism. Well, it just it makes when I look at it, I look at a Rembrandt. I look go. at a I look Rembrandt at a, was a, more of a portrait kind of. Yeah, yeah, and then but the Van Gogh and the Monet. Monet, Van Gogh. I look at this and I go, my ten year old daughter is better than this. Yeah. I don't understand it. I was just like, man, this is bull crap. I don't know. I guess I'm not it's, an artist. I think it's just a different way of seeing things. Like, yeah, it's like a dumb way of seeing things. <laughs> so if you're out there and you like impressionist art, like Lindsay, lose my number. It's the it's the worst. It's the worst. I would rather I'd rather see something from my ten year old. I mean, okay, looking at like realistic paintings and portraits and stuff like that. That's like, cool. That's amazing. Wow. I mean, the skill and yes. I compare it to, like, to me, though, like, that's, like, looking at a photograph. I mean, not to downplay, like... It's cool. Because the skill is amazing, like I said. That's the way I like tattoos, too. I don't want to see your interpretation of what this dude looks like. Draw that dude on your arm. That's Make it perfect. That's cool. I like those lifelike stuffs. I don't know. Gotta be careful about getting a lifelike tattoo, though. Not everybody can do that. I know. That's why it's it's art. No, you're right. Right. Okay. Anyway, impressionist paintings are bullcrap. So don't. <laughs> In summation. Yeah. <laughs> to wrap things up, art is crap. Gotcha. Hey. Uh. Well, then we went to uh, London. Let's talk about London. Yeah. And Ben Eddy came, and mm-hmm. that was my first time really getting to to uh, hang out with Ben Eddy. Super nice guy. I love Ben Eddy. That mustache is on fire. Yeah, dude. He just had a match with Ashley Williams the night before. Stayed and up all night. Stayed up all night. Dancing. And then, yes, in Liverpool. Took a train to, took a train to your to the seminar. seminar. Which was madness. Nice. And it's funny because, uh, you know, he and I were off to the side talking. It's like, wow, we have completely different approaches to jujitsu. Yeah. Like totally, or to the way, to the jujitsu that I was doing during the seminar. Yeah. Um, but it's beautiful that that, you know, he can do something totally different than me. And then we can still... We know jujitsu well enough to understand that that's a functional way as well. Yeah. You know, but the game is just so large. There's so many ways to skin the proverbial cat. But he was very open-minded about... Oh, he, yeah, he yeah. drilled the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ben's the man. And uh, he's a he's a high-level black belt for a reason. You know, he's he's really, really, really good. How great was Jamie Scott? He was awesome. He's the man. I, I kind of thought he was going to be a scary person a little bit. Well, you know, like... Tattoos, bald. I thought he know. was going to be a little bit scary. Well, you're just, tattoos and bald now. Hey, man. You're right. <laughs> Do people think you're scary? Uh, I don't know. Surely not. I think not. you put your personality out there, like, and nobody. Well, Jamie and know. I had communicated over, like, Facebook Messenger yeah. plenty. But, you know, I was it, just ready for, like, a berserker and a destroyer. And he couldn't quit hugging me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a hugger. And yeah. I love it, dude. And then, you know, just hanging out and getting to spend time with him. And then, of course, my man, uh, John McGuire, made the trip up. I love that guy, too. Yeah. Dave. Just everybody out there was really great. Yeah. Um, they were super nice. Yeah, guys. it was a really good trip. Smaller turnout in London. Yeah. They we had, had just. Any, well, they had just had somebody. I yeah. think the weekend. I think they were having somebody the next weekend. Mm-hmm. We did it on a Sunday afternoon. But it was still a decent turnout. Yeah. It was still a good turnout, just smaller than some of the other um like Banbury was a huge turnout. Yeah. Uh, Blue Dragon was a huge turnout. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, it was a good trip. Then, flew back to Dublin, stayed one more night in Ireland. Because we flew, travel tip, we flew in and out of Dublin and then took a plane over to England from yeah, there. Because cheaper. it was about half price to do that. So, a little travel tip for those of you heading to Europe, fly in and out of Dublin if you can. At least, you know, at least check it and see if it's less expensive. Because you can get a plane, a round trip plane from Dublin to London, to London or Dublin to Southampton or wherever. 
mm-hmm. for like a hundred pound. Yeah, you or know. you could ride the train if the trains. Not from Ireland. Oh, it's my island. Oh yeah. Yeah. But you can go to Paris from London. Yeah, they got a channel. Okay. They got a tunnel up in that way. See, we're not we we're not up to snuff on the uh, public transportation over here. With the Our public transportation and, is garbage compared yeah. to Europe for sure. What else you got to say? Say something. Say something sassy. No. I'm good on the yeah. <laughs> I'm good on the stats <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right, hey, um, let's announce our winner for the toehold. You know, as you know, toehold's a sponsor. Mm-hmm. Every month we do a drawing for a free pair of the the personalized flip flops, and all you have to do to enter is screenshot the podcast and then share it on your Instagram story. Tag myself, Brandon MC dot Ninja. Tag toehold toe underscore H O L D toehold, and you get entered in this. Month the winner is Robin Deal at R O B I N D E E L. You win a free pair of flip flops, and he said it's a girl. F Y I, what a girl won! I didn't even know girls could do that. So that really girls can win. Girl, congratulations, Robin (laughs) Deal. You're the winner of a free pair of flippy floppies. I got my swim trunks and my flippy flippy floppies. I'm flipping burgers. You ex. Kinko straight flipping copies. That was my rapping. Was it pretty good? It was good. Yeah, I stole it from uh, the Lonely Island. I'm so jelly that Robin won some flip flops. You should win some flip flops. Maybe I should screenshot the podcast. Uh, maybe you should. That would help. I don't know. What I'm am I exempt from winning? You're exempt from winning, but you're not exempt from helping a brother out. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> Y'all should follow Lindsay on Instagram and send her mean messages on her DMs. Oh. Lindsay McCatherine. <laughs> at Lindsay McCatherine. Hey, that's it. I'm out of here. It's 22 minutes too long. Love y'all.